happy Friday, my loves. It is freaking hot. I am dying right now. I mean, hello. My name is Hollabeck, and welcome to another episode of Randomness and Awesomeness. It is midsummer, which means even the colder states, Michigan, are actually hitting the higher temperatures. So, I thought it was only appropriate that we spend this episode talking about our own very special little star, the sun. Now, I have to be honest, I feel like most of this information is going to be grade school leveled, but the good news is if you were one of those that fell asleep a lot in your middle school science class, now is the time of your redemption. Are you up for the challenge? In comparison to the Earth, the sun is 109 times larger in diameter and 330,000 times greater in mass. In fact, the sun makes up 99% of the total mass of the entire solar system. So the sun is a bit of a celestial chubber. Just a plump little dumpling like me. A spicy dumpling! It is comprised mostly of hydrogen, some helium, and then smaller amounts of various other heavier elements such as oxygen, carbon, neon, and iron. Surprisingly, the sun actually rotates at two different speeds. So it spins faster at the equator and then actually slower at the poles. So, while its equator does a full rotation in about 25 days, the poles will take 33. While most people think of the sun as being yellow, it's actually white in color when viewed from space. It's the Earth's atmosphere that scatters the light, making it look different colors at different times of the day. Inside the sun is a core, similar to how the Earth has a core, and this core comprises 20 to 25% of the sun's radius. It is 150 times denser than water, and it is believed that 99% of the sun's energy actually comes from nuclear fusion within the core. The core itself measures at about 16 million kelvins in temperature, and to put that into perspective for you, that would be close to 29 million degrees Fahrenheit. The coolest part of the sun is the temperature minimum layer, which has a temperature of about 4,100 kelvins, or about 6,900 degrees Fahrenheit. From Earth, the sun is about 93 million miles away. So if humans were able to travel at the speed of light, they would be able to reach the sun in about 8 minutes. Our sun is a golden age of 4.6 billion years old and is considered to be a yellow dwarf star. The sun is currently in the middle of its main sequence phase and is producing vast amount of energy through nuclear fusion, which causes the hydrogen and helium to fuse. So what happens when the sun reaches the end of its main sequence and all the hydrogen is used up? Well, the sun doesn't have enough mass to explode in a supernova, so instead it will exit its main sequence and slowly convert itself into a red giant. Before exiting the main sequence, the sun's luminosity will have doubled from what it currently is. After the main sequence, over the spans of a couple billion years, the sun will slowly grow to 200 times its current size, which will engulf Mercury, Venus, and potentially Earth. Despite this growth, however, the sun will actually lose a third of its mass. Of course, the red giant phase is not the last phase of the sun by any means. The sun will continue to go through phases of growing and shrinking as it uses up its gases until eventually turning into a white dwarf, where it will remain for trillions of years until hypothetically fading into a black dwarf. Fascinating stuff. But unfortunately, that is all the information that I have for you guys today. I know, I'm sorry, this is probably really short, but at the time you guys are watching this, I am going to be off camping, enjoying a little sun myself. So I need to go finish packing. Remember to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you have not done so already. And I will see you next week sometime, hopefully Tuesday. Either way, I'll see you the next time around. And for the love of God, leave me a topic idea. You're going to end up with more crap like this.